going to learn about graph signals and graph filtering. Firstly we shall see what a graph signal is. Consider we have readings temperature, humidity, and locations of six sensing points. If we try to represent this in a diagram, all what we can do is. But, aren't we missing some other information we have? Distance between data points. There is a connection between all data points respective of their location. We can represent that distance in a graph like this. And now if we combine both the graph info and signal info we can get a graph signal. This is the graph signal, and we can represent the correlation between all sensing points, Y graph signal. For example consider this point D in the diagram. Its value depends on all the values around that point. So in case if value of one point increases or decreases in an abnormal way we can correctly evaluate that by using the values of the points around. Where can we see the usage of graph signals? Sensing networks. Brain networks. Transport networks. Social networks. Now moving about the graph filtering process. To learn about graph filtering we should know what a graph Fourier transform process is. To learn about graph Fourier transform, it would be easier to compare this process with discrete Fourier transform because we are familiar with discrete Fourier transform. If we denote vertices and edges in a set form, it will be like. To do mathematical calculations we should change the vertices and edges to vector form. We are introducing degree matrix and adjacency matrix. First degree matrix. It contains the data that dx, the number of edges connected to point x. Let's take point D for example and fill the appropriate elements. Number of edges connected to the point D is 4. Other elements also follow like point D. Let's mark them on degree matrix. Second adjacency matrix. It represents the name of the connected points and the weight of the connecting path. Let's take the same point D. D is connected with B C E F the connection paths B D C D and F D and their paths weights are respectively 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma 1. Let's mark that in the adjacency matrix. Other points data also filled like point D. We are modifying the matrices A and D to Laplacian form. It allows a natural link between discrete representations such as graphs and continuous representations such as vector spaces. Laplacian matrix L is obtained by subtracting matrix A from matrix D. This is the obtained Laplacian matrix L. We are going to convert Laplacian matrices into eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Here eigenvalues are the graph frequencies. And eigenvectors are the signals corresponding to the respective frequencies. As it's just six points it's easy to represent a graph into matrices. But consider a graph with one hundreds and one thousands of sensing points. They're better to use color code system for representation. Now let's consider a signal and represent it in matrix format. Now we have both, signal and graph, so we shall get into a Fourier transform. Graph Fourier transform is a process which converts the signal of graph domain to signal of frequency domain. We already know that the role of frequency in DFT like that in GFT lambda plays the role of frequency. We already have a proven equation. From this we can calculate the graph Fourier transform corresponding to the graph frequencies. For an example if we calculate for L equals 1, the solution will be like. Similarly we can find for the rest of the L values too. We can represent the values in a graph for better understanding. So far we have got a good foundation about Fourier. So now, we can step into the graph filtering subject. Firstly what is filtering? It is a method of getting the required specific range of frequency values from a wide range of frequencies. To understand this easily, we shall go through an example. Firstly we are creating a low frequency signal X by combining two lower frequency components at first. And then a noise signal N by combining higher frequency components. Consider, when a signal X is sent through a medium a noise N is getting added. And a resultant signal of Y is obtained. To get my original signal back, I'm going to use a filter H now. First we create a signal using lower frequency components. After that we should get graph Fourier transform then we denote the details from GFD in a graph for a clear view. Secondly we create a noise using higher frequency components. After that we should get graph Fourier transform then we denote the details from GFD in a graph for a clear view. When the above signal transfers from transmitter to receiver, earlier mentioned noise can be mixed with the signal. The receiver signal's Fourier values are shown on the screen. Let's represent the Fourier values in a graph. I know my receiver signal is a mixture of low frequency signal and high frequency noise. So I am going to build a low pass filter which has lambda 2 and lambda 3 equal 1. Rest of the lambdas equal 0. Now I have got both the received signal and filter. 
By multiplying both in the frequency domain I got a noiseless output. Until now we have done graph filtering by applying Fourier transformation to graph signals. Now let's shortly see a mathematical way to do graph filtering in the graph domain. We have received signal Y, to get the noiseless signal we have to multiply the received signal Y by a filter matrix. The output signal S from the multiplication process is approximately equal to the generated signal X. That's all about the basics of graph signal, graph Fourier transform, and graph filtering. Thanks for watching.